By now, we've all seen the teaser for the all-new Nissan Z. People are going bananas for it. But as news spreads of factories shutting down and thousands of people being laid off, you have to wonder, is this new Z enough to save Nissan? And was the ex-CEO, Carlos Ghosn, actually framed? New emails from Nissan execs might suggest he's been telling the truth about being set up this whole time. He was hailed a hero. When profits began to plummet, he was arrested and charged with financial wrongdoing. I didn't leave Japan to hide somewhere. Everybody's talking about the box, well, good, except you. Good, good for them. I left Japan because I'm looking for justice and I want to clear my name. Oh man, we might have to issue an apology. A hey, big shout out to Amaze for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. You can enter now for your chance to win a brand new 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51 with taxes and shipping included. Plus, Omaze is going to throw in $20,000 just because they're so awesome. The C8 Stingray is an amazing car, but this one is even sicker because it has the Z51 package that bumps horsepower up to 495 buff yet very refined horses. That means a 0 to 60 time of less than 3 seconds, so hurry up and head over to omaze.com slash donut and enter for a chance to win this Stingray plus $20,000 cash. Best of all, every donation supports the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA, the same institution that saved James's life. That's omaze.com slash donut. Go there and donate to support an amazing organization because you could be driving a friggin' stingray. That's sick. If you've been following our ongoing series on Nissan, you know that the badge that's responsible for some of our favorite cars has been teasing a new Z for quite some time now. You probably also know that we claim to have saved Nissan by giving them the idea for a new Z. Uh, we were being just a little clickbaity, I'll admit. Hey man, YouTube's a game and you gotta play the game to win the game, baby. We don't believe that Nissan actually listened to us. They've obviously been developing the car for years now. From the short clip they released in late May, we're able to see the silhouette of a Z car that looks super dope. It looks like a futuristic 240, which is a good sign. It means that Nissan might be making the new Z with enthusiasts in mind, which is what I asked for in the last video. This just might be the car nerd in me, but I think it's vital that Nissan focus their efforts on updating the Z and the GTR. There's also a new Frontier truck in the video, which is long overdue. The previous gen was around for 16 years. Also, what is that M car? It looks like a sporty hatchback thing, and it's the only one that doesn't have a full name at the end of the video. Maybe it'll be sick, I don't know. Nissan has been pretty tight-lipped about all of this, but they did release details about a new generation Nissan Rogue, which is the equivalent of waiting for a Star Wars trailer and getting a picture of Jar Jar Binks, kinda. Some people say that he's a Sith Lord. I think the burden of proof should be on the one making the argument, not the other way around. Moving on, the new redesigned Sentra that Nissan debuted actually looks pretty sick. It looks aggressive and sporty like its big brother, Maxima. The only engine option right now for the new Sentra is an inline four with 149 horsepower and car mags are saying it's pretty slow. But hopefully they'll release a turboed version or a SER or like a Nismo and this car could be Kinda sick, honestly. Frankly, the best part about this new Sentra is the interior. Like I said in a previous video, previous Nissan interiors felt older than old Nissan interiors somehow. I don't know how they did that. I'm glad they finally updated it for the new millennium. While Nissan seems to be doing a few things right, like updating models and teasing us performance-minded young people and taking back control of their image, they are not doing so hot behind the scenes. And by behind the scenes, I mean in newspapers and the public eye. If you push Nissan Renault further apart, they're gonna be better off. I'm not sure that is true. It may be better from a political point of view. It certainly may be better from a reputational point of view. Nissan has been in the news recently after they suffered the worst fiscal year in 20 years. From March 2019 to March of this year, they posted $6.3 billion in losses. That's not a good... <laughs> It's just not a good year. On top of that, the company has already shut down two separate manufacturing plants this year, one in Indonesia and one in Barcelona. There's just not enough people rushing out to scoop up a new Nissan Note anytime soon, even if there are sweet dealer incentives. These are just the first couple steps in a greater initiative to cut losses amidst a declining global car market. Nissan has to drop worldwide production by 20% just to stay afloat. That also means laying off 20,000 Nissan employees. 
With the onset of Brexit happening as well, Nissan won't be able to keep their factory in Sunderland, Great Britain much longer either. The factory is responsible for almost half a million cars a year and it won't be sustainable with new tariffs. That plan alone has 6,000 employees. As if the human toll wasn't enough, Nissan is also cutting the amount of production models from a very nice 69 models to under 55 and reducing total output to 5.4 million cars a year. That's still a ton of cars being produced every year, so I'm not worried about Nissan completely going out of business just yet. There's enough of that Versa fleet money to sustain them for a little while at least. But something a bit more troubling is Nissan's turbulent relationship with their partner, Renault. Back in January, remember that? That was a long time ago. Rumors were floating around that Nissan was considering breaking off from the Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi alliance. For Renault, who owns a significant percentage of Nissan, it's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. The alliance is weird and there's always a power struggle, even though Nissan is the cash cow of the relationship and sells the most cars. Renault has a controlling percentage in Nissan, so it's kind of like that Far Side cartoon where the frog is being swallowed by the stork, but the frog is strangling the stork at the same time. You remember that one cartoon you saw while you were pooping 16 years ago, right? Actually, I had more respect for my far side books than to relegate them to the bathroom. That's where Dilbert went. Nissan is a company that takes immense pride in its engineering. The merger with Renault saved the company from going under, but it also made Nissan synonymous with less than stellar engineering and shoddy build quality and a diluted brand. There's been resentment within the company ever since Carlos Ghosn took over 20 years ago. Resentment that's been slowly bubbling to the surface. Now that Carlos is Ghosn, the pretense of saving the alliance is less important to Nissan. But the rumors of the split were quickly quashed by Renault, who said that their relationship with Nissan has gotten much stronger after the ousting of the infamous ex-CEO, Carlos Ghosn. So what does that mean for us Nissan fans? What can we expect from the company moving forward? For now, Nissan is utilizing their alliance with Renault and Mitsubishi to develop new technology. A new model that was teased in the trailer, the Aria? Aria? with a platform that was developed in conjunction with Renault. The all-electric SUV, which has a similar design language to the new Rogue, is the first of its kind for Nissan. It could be huge for the brand, who already has a decent stake in the EV market with the Leaf, which I was surprised to find out they will be offering with an upgraded 214 horsepower electric motor. That's not bad. Clearly, Nissan is taking the right steps by updating their existing line. I think using the tools that Renault and Mitsubishi have to offer to make new models is a good thing. The fruits of said alliance can be seen in the new update for Nissan's premium badge, Infinity. The new strategy is being described as Nissan Plus and involves a complete overhaul of the existing lineup. New Infinity models will share existing architecture with Nissan models, but focus on becoming ultra luxurious. The new strategy is a way to combat the diluting of the brand and shift focus from the shoddy build quality of cars that helped define Carlos Ghosn's legacy. And speaking of Mr. G, what's going on with him? So what's up with our old friend Carlos Ghosn? New leaked emails from Nissan might suggest that he actually was set up like he's been claiming all along. And if this turns out to be true, I might owe you an apology, Carlos. To understand what's going on, we're gonna have to go all the way back to 2018, right before Carlos Ghosn was arrested and charged with underreporting his income. Back then, things were looking, ow, just bit my mouth. Back then, things were looking pretty bleak, and the market was oversaturated with crappy Nissan models. As the issues built up, the blame was increasingly funneled towards Ghosn. He gained a powerful group of haters within Nissan for proposing that the Japanese company and Renault solidify their partnership by letting Renault buy more stock in Nissan. So that seems to have uh, Carlos Ghosn's fingerprints all over it. He's sort of the master of alliances. Uh, he created this uh, Renault-Nissan alliance in the first place. According to confidential emails from early 2018, these execs at Nissan conspired to neutralize Ghosn's initiatives, effectively sabotaging the CEO from the inside. One of the emails from someone at Nissan literally said, quote, neutralize his initiatives before it's too late. That sounds like some spy movie stuff right there. Then, a day before Ghosn is arrested, an internal memo is circulated at Nissan in which executive Harinata called for the termination of the agreement Nissan had with Renault and that Nissan should have the right to buy Renault and take away their ability to install a new CEO. Sounds like they're 
planning something, right? The very next day, Carlos Ghosn was arrested on a private jet and charged with underreporting his income. Is that like the resisting arrest of white collar crimes? Other emails from after the arrest painted a picture of a company trying their best to smear the reputation of Carlos Ghosn. Hari Nada pressed other Nissan execs to pursue more serious crimes than underreporting income, and his efforts should be, quote, supported by media campaign for insurance of destroying CG reputation hard enough. Turns out that this Hari dude had been secretly visiting Carlos Ghosn's houses in Brazil and Lebanon, trying to dig up dirt on him, eventually using it for a smear campaign to make Nissan look good in comparison. That's slimy! What's going on? So if you didn't know all this, you probably thought Carlos Ghosn was 100% guilty myself included. And while I can't say for sure if Nissan played him for a patsy in order to enact company-wide reform, I'm a little closer to believing Carlos Ghosn was framed. So for the sake of being impartial, I apologize to you, Mr. Ghosn. I'm sorry we passed judgment on you before all the facts came out. Um, I'm glad that you're living your best life in a mansion in Lebanon instead of inside a Japanese prison. Speaking of which, Japan's attempts to extradite Gon from Lebanon haven't been fruitful. The two countries don't have a treaty in place that guarantees that they have to deport international criminals. So Carlos remains a free man for now. It's not a huge deal, it's just kind of causing an international crisis. Just a little thing, just a little crazy. Japan has threatened to withhold a loan to the International Monetary Fund to Lebanon, which is $90 billion in debt. Okay. Sorry, this is a car channel, so we don't need to get into international politics. So anyway, the point is Lebanon and Japan don't have an extradition treaty in place like the US and Japan do, which is why the dudes who helped go and escape Japan, the American ex-Green Beret Michael Taylor and his son Peter were arrested in the US. These guys claim it wasn't a crime to help go and escape, which I think is a great defense and I hope it works out for them. <laughs> <laughs> they face up to three years in prison and a 300,000 yen fine, which is about $2,800. And I'm pretty sure they, they got paid more than that to help go and escape. Look, all we really care about is what we can expect with the new Z. The teaser that Nissan released is cool, but I need a little more info before I start to get excited. I am a Z boy at heart, and I'll probably end up loving whatever it is, but I'm not sure it's enough to change the trajectory of the company. I can't say that with any certainty that all these upgraded models will save Nissan. It's up to the top brass of these companies to get their poop in a group so us lower class plebs can have some cool cars. And if we've learned anything about money grabbing CEOs, it's not guaranteed to happen anytime soon. I'd, I would hate to see the company just split up and assets scattered and that would just be really sad. <sighs> At least we'll always have high car and low car. We'll, we'll always have high car. Be kind, I'll see you next time.